The 2024 election is really shaping up to be this strange turning point for the United States. It seems that no matter what happens in the election, no matter who wins, the future of the United States over the next few years won't be quite what it has been over the previous few. We're seeing an essential three-way race between Kamala Harris now that Biden has dropped out of the race, RFK Jr. who's running a third-party ticket and seems to have a possibility of becoming a serious contender, and of course Donald Trump who's seeking a second non-consecutive term. All three of these presidential candidates have the potential to reshape America drastically. Perhaps the least radical, or maybe that's not even a right term, but the, the most pro-establishment of these candidates is Kamala Harris. If Harris were to win, she'd be breaking ground as the first female president of the United States. While she has, by the point of this video, been a bit ambiguous about what her presidential policies will be this time around, we can make some assumptions that she will generally be following the path laid out by the Biden administration while also working in some of the policy points she had brought up during her own campaign for the nomination back in 2020. Kamala Harris could be expected to promote much of the same foreign policy platform that Biden has, working with NATO, Israel, and Taiwan, as well as other foreign allies against countries like Russia, Iran, and China. The matter between Israel and Palestine is probably the most touchy subject for the Democrats, as a significant portion of their voter base is split on this issue. Relatively speaking, Kamala Harris has been shown to be more sympathetic to Palestine than Joe Biden has been, but that's really not saying much. Harris still expressing a sympathy for Israel and standing with Israel and that Palestine is in the wrong, but that there should be some form of compromise. Harris also borrows more significantly from the progressive wing of the party than Joe Biden does, especially in regard to her views on abortion rights, her views on state-sponsored health care and education, and her track record on environmental policy, showing to be a much stronger supporter of Green New Deal policy than Biden has been, Biden having more of an in-between position when it comes to Democrats, between moderate Democrats and progressive Democrats insofar as what kind of climate policy should be put forward, uh, Kamala Harris lays more in line with the uh, progressive faction that wants to see greater restrictions on fossil fuels, greater investment in renewable energies, a bigger crackdown on carbon emissions, these sorts of things. A United States under Kamala Harris could be expected to swerve further to the left. It's also questionable how stable Harris can keep the country. Say what you will about Biden, but his balance of power, or at least his ability to uh, negotiate compromise between the factions of the party had allowed him to make a lot of progress with what policy he wanted to put forward. Agree with his policy or not, he was effective at getting his policy through. Harris, on the other hand, probably won't be able to strike that balance between the different factions of the party. If the United States finds itself in a moment of crisis, where there is uh, an urgent need to make a decision one way or the other, Harris probably won't be able to strike that balance and get the compromise that she wants, meaning that you're going to probably have a lot of political deadlock and a lot of nothing getting done. Harris would be the closest thing to a continuation of the status quo, but even then it is going to be shifting things more to the left, and there's no telling just how effective of a president she might be. Her track record as vice president, especially on matters like immigration, don't exactly inspire confidence in her abilities as a leader. This is especially concerning in the realm of economics. You know, people have spoken about just how out of control spending and inflation and all sorts of things have gotten under the Biden administration. Those things could only be expected to get worse under a Harris presidency. Especially when we consider that many of the policies Harris has supported in the past have involved more public spending, particularly in the realm of public services. Again, uh, that's welfare, education, healthcare, these sorts of things, which were not exactly in an ideal position to just be doling out at this time, especially if we're going to be continuing our overseas investments in foreign countries, our overseas interventions. Th this is going to put a lot of strain on the American economic system. Once again, at least with Biden, when we were talking about a lot of public spending, it was going toward things like infrastructure projects, which create new jobs and in the long term will lead to returns on those investments. But with public services, a lot of that doesn't come back. Sure, when you have a more educated workforce, that's good and all, but with the way that things are going, if current trends are anything to go off of, a lot of these people who go and get these degrees aren't going to have jobs to look forward to after college. If anything, the market's going to become even more saturated with people who have expertise and there's just not enough jobs to match the number of people looking for jobs. 
Now, Kennedy is the most interesting case in this election. He does have the lowest chances of actually winning, but he is bringing something unique and distinct to the election cycle. What we're seeing from the Kennedy campaign is something actually very reminiscent to what Trump is campaigning on, albeit amalgamated with old Democrat labor policies. Much like Trump, Kennedy has spoken about rooting out the establishment and cracking down on political and economic corruption. He wants to keep American jobs in America, he wants to close the border and make sure that, again, American jobs are for Americans. But what really sets Kennedy apart from both parties is this desire to restructure the election system. Kennedy's been a big critic of the two-party system, and naturally so, he is running as an independent. But he's spoken a lot about how difficult it is for somebody to come into the fray and break up the establishment, to break up these cycles where you have basically the same option in two different colors. If Kennedy were to win and get this policy through, it would dramatically alter the landscape of American politics. It might not lead to the Republican and Democratic Party ceasing to exist, they probably would still be around, but you'd see several other parties crop up and have a viable chance at gaining both state and federal level power. Kennedy also doesn't want to make any enormous investments, rather he wants to cut back on military spending, especially military spending that's going abroad. He has spoken before about this non-interventionist policy where he just wants to unwind the American empire and focus on what's going on here on the home front. He's expressed significant concern that we are reaching a point where we're never ever going to be able to pay off our debt as a country. The economic system in the United States in general is rife with several problems. Tackling the debt would be of great benefit to the American public, but it might also be idealistic to expect that we're going to see major change in the span of only a few years. And even if Kennedy's able to keep us from going over our budget, there's no telling what the next administration might do. This is something that's going to need a long-term solution. Kennedy has of course also spoken about developing independent programs to help bolster black entrepreneurship and business ownership. Having criticized democratic positions of affirmative action and DEI as things which are already unconstitutional and thus off the table. This is something that's not unprecedented in US history, even Nixon had proposed something when he was speaking about uh, his concept of black capitalism back in the 60s and 70s. One of the most interesting and maybe philanthropic is the right word, uh, endeavors that Kennedy has in mind is the creation of a national fitness program. Kennedy's expressed considerable concern about the state of chronic illness in the United States, how you have so many people suffering from obesity, diabetes, all manner of illness, things which were unheard of or extremely rare just a few decades ago. It's really hard to say what an America led by RFK Jr. would look like, but what's certain is that it would definitely shake up the dynamic that currently exists. We could, however, assume that an America under Kennedy would be a lot more inwardly focused and skeptical of foreign intervention. Not only because of the policy that Kennedy himself would put forward, but also because if we assume his campaign reform policy does actually succeed, and you see a total shakeup of the way that the two-party system works, it would be much more difficult in general for the United States to be a foreign interventionist power. Much more significance and attention would be placed on local issues by local politicians and local political parties. That along with a massive reduction in spending to try to tackle the debt, it would cripple the American empire, but it would probably strengthen the American nation. Finally, we have Trump. Now, Trump and Kennedy do share a good deal of positions. Of course, they're both anti-establishment, they both want to unravel the American empire and focus more on the domestic front, they want protectionism to ensure that American industry and business takes priority in America, both want to crack down significantly on immigration to ensure that the domestic population gets priority, However, insofar as where they differ, Trump has a much more strong-handed and distinctly conservative approach to tackling policy. Trump would probably continue a good deal of the infrastructure investment begun under Biden and even expand it, having expressed an interest in developing 10 new cities on federal land within the next few years. Unlike Kennedy and Kamala who have maintained some environmentalist policy, Trump has taken the position of resource exploitation for the sake of achieving American energy independence. This means that he's much less restrictive on things like fossil fuels, acknowledging that most renewable energy isn't quite up to the level that fossil fuels are at presently, and while we should continue to develop those renewables, what we should focus on now is utilizing coal, oil, and that which is currently available. Trump has also assumed a very strong position on cracking down on crime, especially urban crime, hoping to eradicate the threat of gang violence in the United States, both from foreign and domestic organizations. And perhaps most ambitiously, Trump has expressed an interest in gutting the administrative state. 
That is to say, examine and strip down the bureaucratic systems in the federal government, particularly offices and agencies led by unelected officials who have significant influence in shaping national policy. The goal of this, of course, being to make the government more transparent and accountable, not to mention removing unseen obstacles which might interfere with presidential authority. Concerned with the state of polarization and political violence in the United States, Trump has also promised to respond to any riots and political violence with the use of the Insurrection Act to crack down on violent political radicals. It might also be worth adding that in foreign policy, while Trump has spoken about non-interventionism, he might not be as non-interventionist as RFK has been, as RFK has explicitly spoken about unwinding American intervention and unwinding the American empire, whereas Trump seems to want a more gradual reduction of these things, maintaining a strong stance against China and sending a strong warning to Iran. A United States under Trump once again could be expected to be more strong-handed than Kennedy or Kamala, more politically effective at getting policy through than a potential Kamala Harris administration, and more determined to shape a specific future for the United States than a Kennedy administration. Though of course it might also be expected to be more politically turbulent than the other two. But what do you think? What might a presidency under any of these three candidates look like in your opinion? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more. Mr. Z. Out.